I should call this video Watch Emily Make a Disaster. Because I'm good at that. Hey y'all, so here is my summer makeup tutorial or my sweatproof makeup tutorial. I wear it outside during the Texas summer so it can stay through the 100 degree heat and all the sweating and also I wear it when I need to do like a dance performance type of makeup and keep my makeup looking fresh all day. So I've just given you some tips and tricks on how to make your makeup stay longer so I hope you enjoy them and keep watching the video. So right now I have nothing on my skin except for I just washed it and moisturized it. And something important to make sure that your makeup stays sweat proof is to make sure that there's not too much product on your skin. And so you just want to make sure that like everything's really rubbed in. And the first step that I'll be doing is putting on my primer. So this is the Angel Veil by NYX. And again like you don't want to put on too much of this because that'll make your makeup move throughout the day if it's not like set on your face in a thin amount. So just a little bit of this kind of all over. And when I put this on you can tell I kind of put it on the spot that would be most oily for me which is mostly like my nose and a little bit up around here and then I spread it out from there. So there most of the product where my pores are bigger and then spread thinner where my pores don't really aren't super huge. And again, you want to make sure you like rub it in until it's just a thin layer. You don't want it to feel that like, I don't know, slimy film. You just want it to be all nicely blended into your skin. So the next step I'm going to be doing is concealer. Usually I do foundation second, but I just repurchased this concealer and I think it might be too dark for me. So I'm going to put it on under my foundation so the foundation will kind of like make it blend in more. But this is the Maybelline Fit Me Concealer in the color 20. And I'm just going to put this where I need it. And then I'll just tap it in with my fingers. And if you see me looking over here, it's because this is where my mirror is. Um, honestly, I usually do my makeup in like a little mirror that comes with my makeup products. But for this, I'll be classy and use this mirror. Yeah, you can tell this is definitely too dark for me, but it'll look fine under my foundation. Maybe over the summer I will get a tan and it'll actually be my skin tone. So next time my foundation is from the same line. This one is for normal to oily skin and I actually have like dry combination skin but this will be good for summertime when you're sweating. And this is the Mad Poreless Fit Me foundation in the color 120 Classic Ivory. Whoa! Oh my gosh look how much came out. Okay going back in. I should call this video Watch Emily Make a Disaster because I'm good at that. Okay, so I'm going to be putting this on with my Beauty Blender, which I actually just ripped, RIP Beauty Blender, but it'll still work just fine <laughs> with all this product. So I'm just, I got it on the sponge and I'm dabbing it on my face. My Beauty Blender is damp right now so that it won't absorb too much of the product. And I think these work really well for like summertime or when you're going to be sweating because it'll absorb that extra product so it won't stay on your face and it won't slip inside. Okay, so after you're finished like spreading out your foundation, you're going to take your beauty blender and use a different side than the one that you just used and you're going to go back over just kind of your whole skin to make sure um, there's no excess foundation anywhere. Quick and easy. Now these are really nice. They won't absorb like all of the foundation on your skin, so it's good. Um, next, I'm going to go back in with my old concealer, which actually matches my skin tone. This one's 15 Fair. Um, the other one that I got I'll probably be able to use for summer, but it's like way too dark for me right now. <laughs> and looks very orange. So yeah, I'll just cover up a couple spots. Not too many. Yeah. Um, under eye circles. I like to go up a little bit because I feel like that's kind of where the under eye circles start. And then I'm going to take my beauty blender again. It kind of doesn't matter whether you use this or your fingers. Actually, I might just use my fingers. I think they work really well for concealer. I'm blending it. Next, I'm going to take my Maybelline Dream Lumi 
highlighting concealer and I'm going to use it right underneath my eyes and on my eyelids to kind of cancel out those veins that I have. Now you don't have to do this many steps, honestly, sometimes in the summer or like when I'm doing something where I'll be really sweaty, I won't do as many steps just because, I don't know, I don't like the feeling on my skin as much. But if I do want to go all out, this is what I would do. It all just depends on like what you're confident in and what you're doing. I wear more makeup when I know I'm going to be like taking pictures, so if I'm just like going out with friends or family and I know I'm not going to be taking pictures, I probably won't wear as much makeup, but sometimes I think it shows up better in pictures. Okay, and to finish out the cream products, I'm going to be taking my Maybelline Master Contour Stick. I really only like the dark side of this stick. I might get a new product like once this one is done, I don't know. I think it's nice coloring, but obviously I only use one half of the stick, so it's kind of inconvenient that there's a whole light half. I kind of scraped it off because I didn't like it. It doesn't, it doesn't work well on my skin. I don't know, I kind of don't like the formula of that half, but the dark half is pretty good. And now obviously this step is optional. Contour is really something that you don't want to move around because it looks really awkward when contour moves around. But um, with the primer and like setting spray and stuff, it should be good, especially with setting with powder, which we will do in a minute. But now I'm just gonna blend it out with my fingers. You can even see I got some of like the highlighter stick, so I'll just rub that in and you won't even like be able to see it because it's kind of thin. But the contour half works so well. Alright, now that all the cream products are on, I'm going to set it and I just like to use this translucent, translucent perfect light loose powder. I think this company is number seven. It's one of the things from Target, I don't know, this one was just pretty inexpensive for the quantity of product that you got and I think it works really well. I like to use the translucent because I feel like I already get enough coverage from my foundation and I feel like sometimes powder can cover up like the contour that I just did. So usually I just, I've been using this translucent powder and you're going to want to put this all over your face. And when I'm doing this, this is kind of the point where like if I see excess product, usually I'll see it like on my eyelids, I kind of just rub it in and then put powder on top of it. The nice thing about translucent powder is you can put it on later throughout the day and your makeup will look cakey because it's clear and it's usually really fine, the powder itself is. So yeah, probably what I'll be bringing to go out with me is my translucent powder and some concealer to touch up. Next, I'll be doing bronzer. I usually use this e.l.f. palette for my bronzer, and this is the shade Saint Lucia. Saint Lucia? I'm not sure how to say that. But I use the bronzer half of it. You can tell I love it a lot. The blush is good too. Sometimes I use it, sometimes I switch it up. And I'll be using my Real Techniques brush to apply that. Here we go, let's do it right side up. And it just kind of looks like this. It's really good for cheekbones. Since it's only kind of like half there, I kind of like do some wipes to get some product on there, and then I'll put it on my cheekbones. Again, this is just like the makeup that I do when I'm being extra super fancy. Um, if I was just normally going out, I probably wouldn't do all this bronzer because bronzer can get streaky easily. But I do like this combination. Um, I live in Texas and so it gets really hot here and I've been able to wear this out in public and like it doesn't get bad by the end of the day so I really really like it. Next I'm going to be using a tiny brush with the same bronzer to go in to set the powder on my nose. This is probably my favorite step because it makes your nose usually look nice in pictures. And then I'll take my powder brush and just kind of make sure it's all blended in. For blush today, I'm going to be using this Milani Rose Blush. It's called Blossom Time Rose. And it, clearly I've had it for a long time because it's like old and nasty. But it still really kept its shape and it works really well. So 
I really like this blush. So I'm just gonna use this brush that I got from Costco, big, fluffy, and kind of put it on the apples of my cheeks and brush it back. Okay, this is the eyeshadow that I've been loving recently. It's this Milani palette in the color Everyday Eyes, Must Have Naturals, I guess. But anyways, it has some really pretty colors on it, and honestly, I've been taking this big shimmery champagne color and using it as a highlight. So I'll do that today. Like, just look at how pretty that is. It has little gold flecks in it. So just put that on your cheekbones. Cupid's bow, chin. A little bit on your nose. I feel like noses are fine, they usually get shiny anyways. For eyeshadows, I'm going to start with my crease color, which is going to be this kind of medium, lightish brown. It's only a little bit darker than my skin tone, and it's mostly a blending color, so I'm going to put that kind of in the top of my crease. I can probably do a video later going more into depth on how I do my eyeshadow. If you'd like to see that, comment down below. Comment any looks you'd like to see. This step doesn't really matter when you do it, but I think I want to do it today. Usually just kind of goes on the inner corner. So this is the NYX Jumbo Eye Pencil in Milk. And I'm going to put it kind of along the first two-thirds of my lid and the inner corner area. And I feel like eyeshadows are the things that stay the easiest when you're sweating. So this part's pretty simple. I'm taking the same color that I used to highlight my cheekbones and I'm going to put it in the inner corners like this. I think the biggest thing on eyes is eyeliner can sometimes spread if you're not using a good eyeliner, if you are choosing to use eyeliner, and um, mascaras, if they're not waterproof, they will spread. I just put my eyeshadow away and I don't know why because I'm not done yet. Next I'm going to be taking this darker taupey brown color and this is going to go on the outer corner right here. And yeah, like all this stuff is personal preference. Do whatever you feel. This is just what I like to do. And now that I have that on, I'm going to go back in with that lighter taupe color and I'm going to kind of blend it out to make sure there's no harsh lines. Harsh lines are like the last thing that you would ever want, especially when you're concerned about sweating. You don't want, I don't know, that super done up look. I feel like smoky, smokier eyes or like a more neutral eye is probably the best route to go. Um, next I'm going to take this glittery taupe color. I'm using my fingers for this because I feel like that has better color payoff when you put it onto your eyes. I don't know why. But I just always find that that works best for me. Also, it's easy. <laughs> and then I'll kind of rub it in with the lighter color and the darker. And then I'll go back into my brush and kind of smooth it out. Make sure there's no like glitter in your crease or close to that darker color. Now I'm going to go under the lower lash line. First I'm going to take the lighter taupe color that we used up in our crease. And I'm going to kind of smear that all around. This one's more of a blending color down here because then I'm going to go in with this darker color. And you don't have to do all these steps. I like the smoky effect that it gives having color on the lower lash line. But if you don't like the way that that looks or, I don't know, I feel like sometimes when you get sweaty or like you go out, your makeup will tend to travel down. So if you're concerned about having like that droopy, tired, spreading makeup look, then you don't have to do this step. And I'm just going to blend it out like this. And then at last step, I'm going to go back in with that sparkling champagne color. And it's going to go just underneath my eyebrow. To get that nice highlight. Alright, now that that stuff's all done, I'm going to do my makeup setting spray now. I don't like to get it onto my mascara because I feel like that's more like wet stuff pulling down the mascara. And also like, I don't know, I don't think it really affects my brows. So I'm just going to do it now. And you want to give a good amount, but you don't want to put on too much that it's like product running down your face. 
Like you just want to give enough so that it'll get your skin nice and dewy and then it'll dry and hold your makeup in place. And the makeup spray that I'm using is the Matte Finish by NYX Makeup Spray. I have a dewy one and that one works well too. But I like this one because I think it just gives a nice finish to the skin. Because um, I kind of want my skin to be matte. I have the dewiness coming from my highlight that I put on my skin exactly where I want it to be dewy. So everywhere else I want it to be nice and matte. Next I'll do lashes. So I'm just going to curl my lashes. I think this is like a Revlon curler or something. I don't know. Something from the drugstore. Nothing too fancy. And then I love this mascara. It's the Maybelline Lash Sensational Mascara. Really important to have waterproof, sweat can pull your mascara down and that can get blending down here where your dark circles would be or just make it go down your face. And that's not cute. Now if you want to do eyeliner, you can do that. I usually don't wear eyeliner because on my eyes, like, you can kind of tell when I look straight forward. If I wore eyeliner, it would cover up most of my eyeshadow. But um, if you like that and if it looks good on your eyes, go for it. I would go for some sort of eyeliner that markets itself as like waterproof. Eyeliner is not a place to like skimp on. Like you want to get a good one. I think the drugstore does have some good ones. I know NYX has one that I like that I use sometimes. But yeah, anything that markets as waterproof is probably a safer bet than just a normal eyeliner. You can also put on eyelashes too. Um, I'm not going to wear eyelashes today. I usually don't unless it's like a super fancy occasion. But um, yeah, those should stay on even when you're sweaty, as long as you glue them on well. Now I'm going to put mascara on my lower lashes too. If you're concerned about your mascara moving, then I wouldn't do this. Only put mascara on your lower lashes if you know you have a really good waterproof mascara that's not going to move. But I know this one's really good. Also, it's inexpensive. It's only five or six dollars. So I would definitely recommend this one. Um, I know each mascara is different depending on your eyelash type, so maybe it wouldn't work for you or something, but I know a lot of people do like this one. So I would definitely recommend it and try it out if you haven't already and you're looking for a good mascara. Next, I'm gonna be doing my eyebrows. Okay, so I don't know if this pencil markets itself at waterproof or not, but I know it works out well for me and it doesn't really budge throughout the day so this is just a Rimmel eyebrow pencil. Nothing special, nothing fancy, I just like the color and it stays pretty well on me. Plus like as you can see these are my natural eyebrows, like they're pretty big already so like I don't have a whole ton of filling to do. And now I'm just going to brush them out to make the lines not as harsh because really we're mostly trying to make the shadow of the eyebrow hairs, not actual new eyebrows. That's why you don't want your pencil to be too dark. So I'm just going to be brushing it out. Now I'm going with this product. This is the Maybelline Brow Drama. I really like this. This is the, um, it's not dark brown or blonde. I think it's amber. It doesn't, I don't see the color on here. I'm kind of strawberry blonde, so this color works out well for me or like redheads or anyone wanting to have reddish, darker brows. I know redheads don't usually get dark brows. That way if you're like wiping your skin a lot, hopefully your eyebrows won't move too much. I think this product works really well. I've been testing it out for a while now and I definitely do like it. For lips you could always do something that you know is going to like dry and not move at all. Um, for that I would do something like this NYX Lip Laundry. What color is this? Lipley? No, that's probably lip lingerie. I think this is like push-up or something. Corset, there we go. But um, I'm not gonna be doing that today. I'm gonna be doing a normal lip liner with my lipstick. This is the NYX Sandstorm. And this is really nothing special. I mean, Nothing like a waterproof or sweatproof or whatever. It's just normal like lipstick. And then the lipstick that I'm wearing is Verve by MAC. And there you have it. And throughout the day to touch up, I'd probably bring 
um, my lipstick for sure and if I was doing like extra special I'd bring like my powder and my brush but usually I don't even do that I just you know wear this and this is good so I hope this video helped you guys out I know long sweaty days outside can be really hard but here's some tips and tricks to make it easier um, if you used any of my tips or if you just like this video feel free to hit like and subscribe down below and leave comments if you use the tips that I used and thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video bye